We're back. Bear Bones, Broadcast of Norwood Stocks Polling. We're talking about the erosion of the planet, the present tense, inevitable happening. Is everything happening with this globe right now inevitable? I mean, is this his? Oh, it's terrible. Well, let me remind you something. In the midst of all this terrible, and I agree it's terrible, there is some really lovely stuff happening. That when you take enough of the lovely, put it together as a package, you ain't got time to worry about the terrible. What has to happen here? What has to happen? What absolutely has to happen? The prophecies has to be fulfilled. Bullshit. Want to bet? I want to be there when you tell the creator of this planet that. Face to face. You think there's a day you're going to get to do that? I wish to God. And I want to be there. Because that is not so. Is there any prophecy of grudge and terrible has to happen here? No. Not one. Anybody tells you that, bring them to me. Come on. Let's be together in front of everyone on public access. On YouTube. Or wherever you want to meet as long as it's a very public camera that God knows the whole planet can see it. The whole cosmos. The whole dream chamber of your maker. Before the place is built. As this conversation is too. This conversation could not possibly happen and verbatim as it is happening without being built in your maker's dream chamber. <laughs> Quit it, Dutch rub. Quit it. Quit it. Dumbass. My maker likes me whether I like it or not. And I don't like my maker. Simple as that. Got a funny way of showing me it likes me, don't you think? <laughs> wow, I think I'm a really bl life blesses me. Well, I have to look the part, Lord says. <laughs> what an idiot. You've got to look the part. Well, I do. I look the part. Tall, dark, and handsome. Suave air. Song and dance, man. That's me. You're right. I do look the part. Thank you very much, Lord. You. <laughs> I, I met a man today. His name is, um, I would like to tell you his name. His boss, if I wouldn't like it. He's the manager of a, he's district manager for many outlets of a certain franchise. And, uh, he's a tall, dark and handsome man. He showed me his wife, man. No wonder he's not very, well, that would keep you distracted. You always want to go home. He always wants to go home. He always wants to go on vacation. He just can't keep his mind on his job. <laughs> He wouldn't like me saying that, but he keeps, he's really, he, he won't let me take his mind off his job. He's worse than a Marine. Yeah, he's very duty bound to his job. He's neurotic about it. He is. No, he keeps, when he's at work, he keeps work on his mind. He does. In fact, he's, as I say, he's neurotic about keeping work on his mind. And I love distracting him. Because <laughs> I know, listen, once you know that these people are really nice, I have to not overplay my hand. I certainly love devil and top, let's say, responsible people that are really neat people. <laughs> well, once I find that out, <laughs> oh, um, oh, he's a hardcore. To me, he's too hardcore on some things. He, it's nothing like his real personality at all. Not at all. No. When he goes to work, he has to do some really terrible things. He does. Compared to his personality. I mean, in terms of... Oh, what were you to say? Doesn't have any sentiment in it. Doesn't have any sentiment in it at all. Could not think sentimentally of that situation at all. People, things, nothing. 
Oh, I've been pushed to it to a degree in some cases, but not. Uh, you know me, I'd fight that. <laughs> I was trained by people that did. They had sentiment and everything. Yes, they did. I was trained by some very, very sentimental people. One of that during high school, during grade school. Not all of them. There were some that were extremely sentimental unto me and everybody. It wasn't just me. They were sentimental people. I've met some very sentimental people who are very duty-bound too. And very disciplined and so on. Only they're sentimental at the same time. Very sentimental. Mm -hmm. well, they, listen, under certain circumstances, their sentiment can be deadly. Can. They'll kill you. Not the man I was talking about, the down on my heel. I know somebody else who's very sentimental who has the ability to strike you dead within quicker than a bullet. Quicker than a bullet. I know somebody who's standing in front of you could strike you dead faster than you could get a gun out and shoot him. He's a very sentimental man. I remember him. I haven't seen him in years. I remember him an extremely sentimental human being. And he is able to strike you dead quicker than you could pull a weapon and kill him. Do you want to bet? If his timing is, when his timing is on and he hits you just right, it'll be quick and dead. <laughs> dead. Sorry. Dead. He knows where to hit you to kill you. Dead. And you think that is not possible. Yes, it is. And he has the viscera to do it. Because he's worked at this like a... There was some somebody play music how they're just on time and just it's glide and they're well believe me. Some people can do it all kinds of things other than just hit a chord or do they can do it look how about these people with a skateboard that you have any idea what that's like to be able to go wow 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 with a bicycle and land? Oh that's easy. Is it? <laughs> really? Is it easy to practice long enough to do it without breaking your neck? How many tr die trying? I know I wouldn't make it. About, oh, two weeks into practice, somehow something would go wrong and I wouldn't be here. Let's say I could do it. I was rehearsing. Something would go wrong. <laughs> Hell, it wouldn't. No, no, no. Some of the, oh, I better move the dumb thing. Some of these things, see, people have... Um, not calisthenic, it's, uh, dexterity. Some of the dexterity people have accomplished is astounding. Some of the physical dexterities and timing, mind boggling and breathtaking. Come on. Ding dong thing. The ding dong thing. <laughs>